Hey guys, a practice here, and I wanted to test something in Universe Sandbox 2. So let's go ahead and get started. So there was that one video I did uh, a little while ago where uh, I used the moon orbiting close to Earth to actually warm Earth up while it was a rogue planet. So basically what I did was I removed the sun from the equation, just got rid of it like that. And I basically put the moon around Earth and used its tidal heating to actually warm it up. Because as you can see, immediately when I take the sun away, Earth starts freezing over. And now all our continents are frozen, and very shortly here, we'll start seeing the planet itself freeze. And now the ice is expanding, and now we are forming a snowball Earth. That would essentially be the end of all surface life on Earth. Of course, there would still be uh, life down in the oceans where it's still insulated by the ice for a pretty long amount of time. So let's go ahead and open up the solar system. Actually, no. I believe there is a simulation with Jupiter. What I want to test today is essentially what would happen if we used Jupiter and made Earth a moon of Jupiter and tried to take advantage of Jupiter to actually warm Earth at a distance of the sun. Not a plan emo, but at the distance of the sun. If I can find a simulation that does that. Jupiter and moons, maybe this one? No, I don't see any sun in this one, I don't think. No, there's no sun in that one. Um, hmm. Maybe I could take advantage of one of these Juno ones. Ah, there we go. So let's go ahead and remove Juno, the satellite that is currently orbiting Jupiter. And let's remove Earth. Okay, so now we have Jupiter here at a distance of, well, one Jupiter from the sun, which is axis of that doesn't seem right of Jupiter selected right now I don't ah 5.2 astronomical units from the Sun okay so I'm gonna keep the Sun there and take advantage of some of the warmth of the Sun and let's just remove a lot of these moons from the equation let's go ahead and just pause the game here and get rid of a lot of these because the most are gonna do the most are gonna do is just slow down the simulation so all the outer moons are gone I'm gonna leave the inner moons in case they actually collide with Earth because that would actually be a uh, Kind of interesting thing to note okay so now i just have uh, jupiter and its inner moons here let's go ahead and zoom in all right so now we just have the uh, moons that are primarily orbiting jupiter and what i want to do is i'm actually going to save this for the sake of not having to redo this every time so just save that under its default name okay so where is jupiter oh no did i delete jupiter Oh, I might have deleted. Oh, man. Well, one moment. So I'm back, and I have went ahead and got rid of all the outer moons and just left the inner ones that might actually have an effect on this. So let's just go ahead and slow down time a little bit. Let the simulation just kind of get rid of all these jagged trails. Okay. So now we have an idea of what all the inner moons look like when they're orbiting. I don't think Europa is going to be relevant to this, but it might. Let's uh, see what happens. We have Ganymede out here. This is the uh, furthest moon that's out currently that I've left into the uh, simulation. Now let's see what happens if we just add Earth orbiting around Jupiter. Let's just throw it right there and see if it actually uh, throws some of these moons out of proper orbit. Now, since we are so far from the sun, I would expect the temperature to start dropping significantly and quickly. And now our oceans are actually burning up. We are actually within the Roche limit. Or not the Roche limit, but we have a uh, tidal heating effect going on. We're actually heating up Earth by a significant margin. You see the oceans clearing away. There's no ice. The temperature of Earth is actually at 164 degrees Celsius. It's quite far from the sun, so this has to be primarily due to tidal heating. Super interesting, and if we just let it go over time, I wonder how warm it'll actually get. Ooh, it's crossing orbits. So that cannot be good. Oh, no, we just had a moon collide into it. Oh, and it's pulling Ganymede with it. 
Oh no, this is probably not good. Yeah, I think we just threw Ganymede out further than it's supposed to be. Okay. Wait, that was actually good for the Earth. Check this out. That actually knocked it out of its orbit, and look what's happening. The oceans are actually returning. <laughs> well, that's just kind of a freak accident right there. Look at that. I don't know what moon actually collided into Earth. I wasn't tracking that. But it must have a lot of water on it, because check that out. Earth has more ocean. It added water to Earth, and now we have, like, very little continents. For what little bit we do have, it's kind of habitable, but that might have caused a mass extinction event, that collision, so... Probably not the best for Earth, but it might actually be terraformable at, in its current state. Let's see what the temperature balances out to. Okay, now it turned into a snowball. But the thing is, the uh, tidal heating is not the most reliable thing in this game. So, it's kind of not buggy, but if I speed up the simulation, it'll cool down. And some, and if I slow down the simulation, sometimes it'll warm up. It's not really consistent. So let's get rid of Earth here. And this time, let's remove the moons and make them no longer a factor in this. So, Ganymede, Io, Amethea, Phoebe, what is that? Metis and 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 drustre i can that one okay so now we just have jupiter it's the only factor and earth now let's make earth orbit jupiter let's say fifty thousand kilometers away and let's just watch what happens to earth it's probably going to heat up at this distance might have just found the uh, perfect location for it. Nope, it's actually cooling down slightly. Hmm. Let's uh, let this run for a little bit and see what happens. You know what? I might have just accidentally pulled this off. Okay, so it's a lot colder than it used to be, but that's actually probably a good thing. At 50,000 kilometers from Jupiter, it looks like it's actually maintaining a good temperature. It's actually dropped down to... 12 degrees and it's going back up to 14 so it's actually kind of cooler earth which is actually something that we kind of see necessary so i think if we had earth orbiting 50,000 kilometers from jupiter we could take advantage of the tidal heating to actually warm up this planet making this a life-bearing terraformable planet around jupiter our largest gas giant so, we are technically a moon, no longer a planet. So, very cool. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. It really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one. Now, for the hell of it, let's just put a bunch of ferrets around here. Uh-oh, we're warming up Jupiter. Oh, things are going bad. Let's uh, slow it down a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, that's not good. It's probably not a good thing. We're kind of evaporating Earth now. Hmm. Let's make another Jupiter orbit around. Oh no, it's consuming all the Earths. Imagine that's throwing the sun off balance a little bit. Let's see what the sun's looking like. Yeah, it's probably got a little bit of wobble to it, but it's not really moving around too much. Well, it's not going to move around unless we speed up time quite a bit. Oh. Well, that can't be good. There was a bunch of our Earths. There was one of the Jupiters, it was, they just ejected each other out. Anyways, see you guys next time.